Hi guys, this is Jazz from Jazz Truck Driving School. Today we'll be doing the updated version of the melt program that I did it two years ago. So there are a lot of things that have been changed uh, in the last two years. So I'm going to try my best to uh, come to the updated version for the melt program in Ontario. And so here we are today and doing the uh, melt program in Ontario. Uh, just the training portion of the uh, schedule one. Okay. Alright, so this is the truck that we're going to be doing the inspection on. Um, so the very first thing for the for the for your training and stuff uh, before you even start your road test uh, make sure your uh, the tractor tour is on the level surface on the ground right and make sure your wheels are chalked so let's go out the back and then we'll chalk the wheels so we'll put one in the back of this tire and then we'll put one in the front of the tire Okay, so our wheels, wheels are chalked, the tractor trailer is on the level ground surface, so if you're ready to do the inspection for the... Alright, so uh, we're going to be starting with the Schedule 1. Now, Schedule 1 is the uh, inspection sheet that has 23 items in total. So if you look at it from Part 1, it starts from the air brake, and then it goes all the way down to number 14, to number 15, to all the way to number 23 in total. So they're all alphabetical orders. So if you ever want to look for the exact uh, the component, just make sure you know what's the, the letter it starts from, and you can check it out from the Schedule 1. Okay, the schedule one has the minor defect on the column two and the major defect on the column three, right? So you need to actually understand these columns, okay, when the uh, when the question get asked um, and the examiner ask you a question with regards to the system components. So make sure you know which question they're asking you and what are the minor and the major defects based on that question they asked you. Okay, so let's start with the uh, exterior inspection. So there are three types of inspection they're going to be asking you. The first one is the exterior inspection where they're going to be asking you four items in total from the schedule one. Okay. One item out of the four item would be from the air brake. So one item is from the air brake and other three will be from the schedule one from the exterior inspection. Schedule one. Okay. So in total, we got five questions in our air brake. So let's go through all the five questions. So air brake questions. Okay. Air brake. So the first question, second, third, fourth, fifth. So the first one is called the low air warning. Low air warning. Okay. Second question would be um, slow air pressure build up rate. Slow air pressure. build up okay third would be the uh, tractor protection system okay and the fourth would be the uh, your uh, audible air leak test and the fifth one would be your brake adjustment now if your truck happens to have the disc brake system on the truck right so you cannot really do the practical on the brake adjustment on the disc brake system so you would have to verbally explain the examiner how do you check the actual um, your brake chambers and what would you do what are the sizes and stuff you have to do that verbally if you have the actual tractor with the spring brake chambers then yes you have to do practical yes in, in that truck. so we will do both so we'll do the um, uh, verbal and the practicals because this truck is equipped with the disc brake system and the other truck that we're going to be doing the inspection for the practical for the um, uh, brake adjustment uh, will be done on the other truck all right, so these are the five questions. So we're going to do all these five questions one, one by one. So let's start with the first question, which is called the low air warning. Okay, so how do you check the low air warning? Okay, let's go over this. So to check the low air warning, first we have to start the engine. Okay, we turn on the key. Uh, all right, so if you look at these gauges over here, so we got so many different gauges here, right? Starting from the uh, air pressure gauges uh, on the right-hand side, so primary and the secondary gauges over here, they're within the normal operating range, if you can see it. Uh, we got the speedometer here, okay? 
we got the uh, oil pressure gauge, we got the fuel gauge here with the DEF, there, RPM, with the water temperature and the miscellaneous gauges on the left hand side, okay? So these are the two gauges that we have to be really uh, be concerned about, okay? P for primary, S for secondary, okay? So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be actually testing these, uh, uh, your low air warning test. So for that, we need to uh, look at the gauges to make sure the gauges are within the uh, normal operating range. Okay, so which they are, they are between the 80 to 145 PSI. So what we're going to be doing, we're going to be starting the actual inspection right now. So for the lower warning, we're going to be stop pumping the brake pedal until the warning light triggers on the dashboard. Okay, so here we are, we're going to be looking for the trigger point here. So I'm going to start pumping the brake. As you can see, the pressure is going down. And there you go that's my lower warning on my truck here and it comes on around 70 psi and which is good because it's above 55 psi if it was below 55 psi then that would be the major defect and then what would you do in the major defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and you're going to put the truck out of service now do we have any minor in this one no we don't have any minor so make sure you let the examiner know that there is no minor defect it's just the major which is if it's uh, less than 40 uh, 55 psi or if it doesn't come at all then that would be the major and whenever it's a major make sure these three phases that you need to remember you'll make a written report inform your operator and you're going to put the truck out of service okay the next question for the uh, air brake system we're going to do in is the slow air pressure build up rate now in this question we'll be uh, actually uh, bringing the pressure down to 80 and then from 85 to 100 we're going to start the timer okay and see how long it takes it should take less than two minutes okay if it takes more than two minutes then it's a minor defect okay as long as it's building is good right but if it builds uh, less than two minutes it's good if it takes more than two minutes it's the minor defect there will not be any major on this part of the question okay so let's do this one so i'm going to bring the pressure down to 80 And then we're gonna start counting from 85. I'm gonna put the timer here. Okay, so that's 80 right here. And I'm gonna let it build up to 85. So let's say this is 85 PSI. I start the timer and keep my RPM between 600 to 900 RPM over here. And when it reaches 100, I'm gonna stop the timer. All right, so it reaches 100 in about 14 seconds, which is good because it's less than two minutes if it takes more than two minutes then according to the schedule one that would be the minor defect and then what you would have to do in the minor defect you have to make a written report inform your operator and continue drive the vehicle and on this uh, question we don't have any major defect okay so now the next question is the tractor protection valve system okay now in this question we would have to actually check to see if the service uh, line at the back is leaking the time when you uh, press the brake paddle or not okay all right, so to do the tractor protection valve, make sure your parking brakes are on, okay? Parking brakes are on, and uh, you shut off your engine, make sure your pressure is above 100 PSI. And now I have to go outside to see if there is any air leak from the back. Okay, so we're going to be taking that blue service line out from here, all right? So we're going to right here, maybe on the mud flap or on the toilet, okay? And you go inside the truck, put the service brake for a few seconds and listen for any audible air leak coming from the service line here, the one that we took off. All right, so there is no air leak coming off the service line, which is good. If there was an air leak coming out, then that would be the major defect and you would have to make a written report, inform your operator, and you're gonna put the truck out of service. And there is no minor defect on this one, okay? And then once you're done with this step, make sure you put this one back onto the, the, the other side, okay? So that, that covers our tractor protection valve system. Now the next one, all right so the next one is the um, audible air leak system okay so in this in this one we will have to start the engine and then we will have to release the parking brakes and make sure the pressure is between the normal operating range and then we turn off the engine and then we have to time it okay let's do this so we're going to turn on the engine first all right 
start the engine. All right, so I'm gonna make sure the pressure is above 100. I'm gonna release the parking brakes, tractor and trailer both. All right, make sure your wheels are chalked, which we already checked in the beginning. Okay, so the brakes are released, the wheels are chalked, truck is not gonna move nowhere, okay? Now, what we need to do is make sure the pressure is still above 100 or between the normal operating range, which it is. All right, so what we need to do is we need to shut off the engine and then we need to uh, time it for a minute and see how many PSI we lose, okay? So I'm gonna shut off the engine right now, okay? And I'm gonna turn the key back on to get the air pressure gauges back on the track here. All right, just waiting for them to go back up. There we go, all right. So I know where my gauges are sitting at right now. So what I need to do is I'm gonna hold the brake pedal, okay, for a minute, okay? There you go, I hold it and I'm gonna time it. Make sure you hold it first, make sure it stabilizes and then you time it. And then you time it for a minute and you keep an eye on both the gauges, your primary and the secondary. At the same time, listen for any air leak from outside too. So make sure you let the examiner know that there is no leaks coming from the outside as well. So, so far we don't see any leaks here. I don't see any pressure going down. Still staying there and there is no audible air leak from outside as well. So it's 36 seconds. So we still got 20 more seconds to go. It seems like we don't have any drops. Okay, so it's been a minute and I didn't even lose a single pound here, so which is good. Uh, and I didn't hear any audible air leak from outside as well too. So if there was a drop more than four PSI on the gauges here, then that would be the major defect. And what you would have to do in the major defect, you'll have to make a written report, call your operator, and you're gonna put the truck out of service. Now, this one also has a minor defect. The minor defect is if you hear any audible air leak from outside during that minute, then that would be the minor defect. Then you, what you have to do is you have to make a written report, inform your operator, and you're gonna continue to drive the vehicle, okay? And that covers your audible air leak test. And make sure, don't forget to back on again, okay? Next one is your brake adjustment. Now, to do the brake adjustment, now in this truck, we don't have the actual spring brake chambers. We have the disc brake system, okay? So the disc brake system, we, we cannot actually do the, uh, the push rod check. We cannot measure it. So, uh, but if you have the uh, disc brake system on the truck, so make sure you, you let the examiner know everything verbally, okay? So to do the verbal check, right, make sure uh, you let him know that I'm gonna use the verbal method to explain the brake adjustment. So the very first thing that you need to do is to uh, make sure your wheels are chalked, okay? You start the engine, okay? All right, and then you release your tractor and your trailer parking brakes, okay? And then you make sure your uh, pressure is uh, between 90 to 100, which it is almost, okay? So you're gonna have to pump the brake pedal and bring it down to 90 to 100 right there, okay? And then you're gonna have to turn the steering wheel all the way to the left, okay? And then you're gonna have to turn off the engine okay and then you go outside and then you do the actual practical test on the brake adjustment okay and I turn the wheels all the way to the left and then I need to grab my tools with me there we go so the very first thing we need to uh, get with us is the uh, measuring caliper. So here's this chamber that we need to measure the size of us. So we need to know this outside diameter of this chamber. So, so first of all, I need to know the outside diameter. So I'm gonna put this one around the actual outer clamp of the chamber, which is, I'm trying to find the, the size of the diaphragm inside. So this is preset already. So if, you, if it's not, then you can tight it. Okay, so, and then I'm gonna measure that on the tape measurement. Okay, and then starting point, ending points. So it happens to be 172 millimeters. 
okay so this is 100 and all the way down to 172 millimeters right here okay so 172 millimeters you're going to check that on the chart and see what's the what size is that so if you look at the outside diameter here so 172 is right here so there are two of them and that means so we got two sizes 20 and 20 l now to, to check which size is that you have to go back to the chamber and check for a tag here the blue tag plus there's a groove on the side here so that means this is 20 l l means long stroke chamber so if there was no tag no groove on the side that means it would be regular so this is a 20 l chamber so if you look at the 20 l chamber the adjustment limit is 51 mm or two inches so that means the push rod should not stick out more than two inches when i hit the brake pedal with fully applied pressure on it okay so before i do that i need to make sure i put a reference point with this uh, soapstone so make sure if there's any one uh, any point before that you delete it and put a new one there so that's your reference point right there that white mark over there now what I need to do is I need to go back inside the truck and press the brake pedal fully applied but then make sure the pressure stays between 90 to 100 so I'm going to use this 2x4 here okay so I'm going to use my brake pedal and my seat to actually hold the brake for me all right so the brakes are applied okay and uh, my pressure is still between 90 to 100 all right and now I gotta check to see how far the push rod came out all right so if I check from here all the way down to this point the white line the, the marker that I marked it was it is one and a half inch Okay, so which is good because our maximum was two inches. So if it was more than two inch, if the push rod traveled more than two inches, then that would be the major defect. And you would have to make a written report, inform your operator, and you're gonna put the truck out of service, and there is no minor defect on it. And so once you're done with this step, make sure uh, you go inside, you put the brakes on, take your uh, brake, and then you put your, and that completes your, uh, brake adjustment check you're doing the in cap check so to do the in cap check the very first thing you do you come inside the truck right and you turn the key on and you check for all the warning indicators make sure all the warning indicators are working okay and then you start the engine and you tell the examiner that there is no warning indicators on the dashboard except for the parking brake sign and the seat belt sign okay and then once you're done with this then you start the your driver's seat my driver's seat no cuts no damages it's in a set position it rolls up and back and forth okay my seat belt here okay it, bu it buckles out okay my teeter belt no crack no damage is tight and secure okay then we check the glass and mirrors here my glass window glass no crack no damage is tight and secure okay my mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure the bracket looks good uh, no crack no damage my hood mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure okay and the bracket looks tight and secure my right side hood mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure my windshield no crack no, no damage is tight and secure my passenger side window glass no crack no damage and the mirror no crack no damage the bracket looks tight and secure my rear side window glass over here no crack no damage it's tight and secure okay and then we move on to the steering here so in the steering there are three things that you need to remember that you got to do okay so the first one is you got to turn the steering wheel all the way to the left make sure it turns all the way left it turns all the way to the right okay and then there is no extra play on the steering wheel okay and it's tight and secure okay and then your city horn is working highway horn is working your left signal on the dashboard is working the right signal on the dashboard is working your four ways on the dashboard is working your headlight and your high beam lights they are working okay and then we go on the gauges here my miscellaneous gauges on the air brake is working rpm gauge is working your water temperature gauge is working your fuel gauge is working my df is full your speedometer gauges we'll check it on the road 
okay we can check it right now because we're not moving all gauge is working your brake pressure uh, your primary and the secondary air pressure gauges they are building the pressure they're within the normal operating range which is between 80 to 145 so they're working good okay I don't see any uh, warning signs on the dashboard except for the parking brake okay then we'll check the uh, wiper and washer so you turn the washer wiper on so my wipers are working the high speed on the wipers are working okay no missing blades okay no crack no damage my low speed on the uh, wipers are working as well okay cleaning the surface properly and then I got to check the washer spray make sure the washer spray is cleaning yep this is working as well cleaning the surface properly and then you shut it off and then you go to the actual uh, dashboard here dashboard looks clean no crack no damage okay and then you check your defroster and your heater okay so you turn it everything all the way to the heater and defroster so my so you're gonna have to check the uh, defroster here my defroster is working my defroster and my leg vent is working my leg vent is working my face vent and the leg the both are working and the face vent is working okay then I check the speed as well so number eight is working seven's working six working five is working four is working three is working two working one's working and it's off and now make sure there is no debris on the floor the floor looks clean okay and you got three safety equipments over here you got the triangle you got the fire extinguisher which we have it on the under the seat on the left hand side and we got the first aid kit over here and then you got four documents with you that you need to keep it all the time you got the registration insurance CVOR and your inspection report all right, so now we're going to be doing the inside inspection. On the inside inspection, there are five questions in total. Out of those five questions, they're going to ask you two items, okay? So the first question uh, could be from the driver's seat, okay? So to check the driver's seat, uh, you're going to have to do the driver's seat inspection. So driver's seat, no cuts, no damages, okay? It's in a set position. It rolls back and forth, okay? And my seat belt, no cuts, no damages, okay? It buckles in and it buckles out okay and my teeter belt no crack no damages it's tight and secure okay and then you read the schedule one on the uh, driver's seat under the minor defect seat is damaged or fails to remain in set position that's the minor defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle under the major defect seat belt or teeter belt is insecure missing or malfunctions that's the major defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service now the next question could be from the uh, emergency equipment and safety devices over here okay so the emergency equipment and safety devices you would have to check three major things over here make sure your uh, your first aid kit is there okay your first aid kit no crack no damage make sure all the stuff is inside it uh, your triangle no crack no damage everything looks good okay and then I got my fire extinguisher under the seat here on this side okay it's tight and secure no crack no damage okay and it's in fully loaded okay under the minor and the major you check the minor here emergency equipment is missing damage or defective that's the minor defect you make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle and there is no major defect on this one then we come to the glass and mirrors so the next question is the glass and mirrors so under the glass and mirrors same stuff that we did earlier but you have to make sure you do it again okay don't tell them that hey I already did it man I don't want to do it again so make sure you do it okay so the glass and mirrors so glass and mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure my wind uh, mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure the brackets tight and secure no crack no damage my windshield no crack no damage is tight and secure my left side hood mirror no crack no damage brackets are tight and secure my right side hood mirror and bracket no crack no damage is tight and secure my window glass on the passenger side no crack no damage and the mirror no crack no damage the brackets look tight and secure and my rear window glass over here and my upper mirror on the both side no crack no damage is tight and secure and under the minor defect required mirror or window glass fail to provide the required view to the driver as a result of being cracked broken damaged missing or maladjusted 
B. Required mirror or glass is broken or, or damaged attachment onto the vehicle body. These are the minor defect. I'll make a written report, inform my operator and continue to drive the vehicle and there is no major defect. Now, the next question uh, might be from the uh, your heater and defroster, okay? So to check the heater and defroster, again, you turn the engine on okay, and I have to start the engine. So this is our defroster here, that's our heater and I'm going to turn it all the way to number 8 and then we're going to have to inspect all these one by one, okay? So my, my defroster is working fine, my defroster and my legs went working fine, the legs only went working fine, yep, and my face went and legs. The both are working good and the face only yep it's working fine number eight is working number seven is working number six is working five is working four is working three is working two is working one's working and it's off okay now that's your heater and defroster right here under the minor defect control or system failure as the minor defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle and on the major defect defroster fails to provide unobstructed view through the windshield that's the major defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service all right so the next question uh, in our inside inspection would be windshield wiper and washer okay so he may ask you okay uh, demonstrate the ins uh, windshield wiper and washer okay so you turn the key on okay or you turn the engine on whichever way you want it and then you turn your wipers on make sure they're working fine they're cleaning the surface properly no missing blades the high speed is working and you check for the low speed make sure the low speed is working and it's cleaning the surface properly and then you got to check the spray as well Okay, my spray is working, it's cleaning the surface properly. And that's a, that, that completes your demonstration on the wiper and washer. And make sure you check the minor and major on this one. So under the minor defect, control or system malfunction, wiper blade is damaged, missing or fails to adequately clear the driver uh, field of vision. That's the minor defect. I'll make a return report, inform my operator and continue to drive the vehicle. And under the major defect, when use of wiper or washer is required, wiper or washer fails to adequately clear the driver field of vision in areas swept by the driver side wiper that's the major defect i'll make a written report inform my operator and put the truck out of service now uh, we're going to be doing the uh, the cab check right here so if you look at this cab here uh, it's, that means your door okay so he may ask you occupant compartment door fails to open so you would have to actually um, inspect it demonstrate it and tell the minor and the major and what you would do with the minor and the major so to de uh, to demonstrate the uh, the cab door so make sure you look at the uh, the door the one you want to inspect so this is my cab door no crack no damage it opens properly it closes securely then you would do the same thing by going inside you go inside the truck make sure you close it so it closes properly and then it opens properly okay and then once it's done then you're going to have to read the minor and major so to read the minor and major you're going to go back to the schedule one here for the cab uh, under the minor defect occupant compartment door fails to open that's the minor defect you would have to make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle under the major defect any cab or sleeper door fails to close securely that would be the major defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service all right so next question would be from the coupling devices so there are three questions in the coupling devices the first question would be the coupler or mounting has loose or missing fastener the second would be a coupler is insecure or movement exceeds the prescribed limit the third would be the coupling or locking mechanism is damaged or fails to lock okay so the first question we'll be doing is coupler or mounting has loose or missing fastener okay so to check that so this is our fifth wheel coupler right here okay so the question is about the fasteners okay so you only check the fasteners okay so this is my coupler fasteners no crack no damage is tight and secure no missing no broken okay all of them make sure you check okay put your hands on all of them 
and then you do the same thing on the other side of the truck okay so on this side you're going to be doing the same stuff so all my fasteners are tight and secure no crack no damage no missing no broken fasteners everything looks good as it's supposed to uh, so under the minor defect of the schedule one here uh, for the fasteners is the coupler or mounting has loose or missing fastener that's the minor defect you'll make a written report inform the operator and continue to drive the vehicle and there is no major defect on this one okay so that's for the question the coupler or mounting has loose or missing fastener so the second question from this uh, schedule one could be a coupler is insecure or movement exceeds the prescribed limit so we have to go on the other side to make the mo uh, movement marks and stuff so you come on the where the fifth wheel handle is okay so now this question needs to be done uh, verbally or practically you can choose whichever one you want to do it okay so to check the uh, so if you look at this question the coupler is insecure or movement exceeds the prescribed limit there are two questions attached to this one right so the coupler is insecure so first of all you have to check the insecurity of this uh, security of this uh, coupler so make sure the handle is in locked position all the fastener looks tight and secure everything looks good on this coupler itself now when it comes to the uh, movement exceeds the prescribed limit now we would have to choose this either there are two ways you can do it you can do it practically or you can do it uh, verbally so always try to do it verbally which is easier for you to explain it so to do the verbal method so what are you going to tell the examiner is that I would go inside the truck okay and I'll release the tractor brakes and I'll move the truck forward and uh, as far as I can and put the brakes on and come outside with that with some kind of a soapstone or like a like a mark like you know I use this one uh, that you're going to make a mark on the actual on top of the coupler uh, the upper plate here which is parallel to the fifth wheel bolt here so you make a mark here like this okay and then you go back inside the truck and then you start the engine again you release the tractor brakes again uh, only make sure you release the tractor brakes okay you release the tractor brakes put on reverse and go back a little bit as far as you can again and put the brakes on come outside and then you make another mark on the upper plate parallel to the fifth wheel bolt again okay now make sure you measure with the measure tape the first point the, the one that you marked earlier and the second mark make sure the distance should not be more than half an inch if the distance is more than half an inch then that would be the major defect I'll make a written report inform my operator and put the truck out of service and there is no minor defect on this one now to do the exhaust system we have to first start the engine so we go inside okay and then we under the cab you check for an exhaust leak under the cab here all the exhaust pipe looks good all the fasteners look tight and secure come over here no crack no damage on the shield here the exhaust pipe look good no crack no damage no exhaust leak and then you have to go inside the truck and you come inside and you close the door roll up the window and smell for any leak for in inside I don't smell any leaks so you come outside and you let the examiner know that there is no leaks inside as well sir and then what you need to tell him that uh, I'm gonna go close my hood and turn off my engine and then tell you the minor and the major defects so close your hood and you turn off your engine 
and then you got to read the minor and the major for that question exhaust system so under the exhaust system under the minor defect if you look exhaust leaked um, except as described in column 3 which is this one so that's my minor defect I'll make a written report inform my operator and uh, continue to drive the vehicle and under the major defect leak that causes exhaust gas to enter the occupant compartment that would be the major defect and you would have to make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service and that concludes your exhaust system all right so the next question is the frame and cargo body so in this question we have to open the hood again so make sure the latches are open okay i'm gonna open the hood all right there you go okay so frame starts on the front of the engine here okay so the frame looks good no crack no damage tight and secure okay all the fasteners look good tight and secure no crack no damage everything looks good under the cab the frame looks good no crack no damage all the fasteners look tight and secure the catwalk over here in the frame no crack no damage fasteners look tight and secure the fifth wheel frame over here no crack no damage all the fasteners are tight and secure no no missing then we got the uh, the landing gear frame here no crack no damage the foot tight and secure handle is tight and secure secure in the store there uh, the trailer frame underneath no crack no damage tight and secure okay the bogey is here at the back no crack no damage it's tight and secure and your cargo body no crack no damage tight and secure not sagging not shifted not collapsing everything looks good no crack no damage and it's all tight and secure and then then you got to read the minor and the major so under the minor defect for the frame and cargo body damage frame or cargo body is the minor defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle under the major defect visibly shifted cracked collapsing or sagging frame member no crack no damage and then you'll make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service all right so the next question is the fuel system so on the fuel system we got two fuel tanks one on the left side one on the right side we're going to have to inspect both of them okay so make sure you check the fuel tank no crack no damage it's tight and secure the straps are tight and secure the fasteners are tight and secure okay they're not missing okay there is no leaks under the fuel tank make sure the fuel cap is tight and secure and there is no leak underneath the engine okay no fuel leak and then you go on the other side and do the same thing my fuel tank over here no crack no damage is tight and secure okay the cap is tight and secure it's not missing the straps are tight and secure the fasteners are tight and secure there is no leak underneath the fuel tank here and there is no leak underneath the engine here okay so under the fuel system under the minor defect missing fuel tank cap is the minor defect you'll make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle under the major defect insecure fuel tank dripping fuel leak that's the major defect you make a written report inform your operator and put the truck out of service okay and the next question is the uh, the glass and mirrors so in the glass and mirrors we're going to have to inspect all the glasses and the mirrors and stuff so to check the glass and mirrors uh, you check from the window glass on the passenger side here no crack no damage is tight and secure your uh, mirror on the passenger side no crack no damage is tight and secure the brackets are tight and secure okay uh, the upper mirror no crack no damage tight and secure the hood mirror on the right side no crack no damage is tight and secure the brackets are tight and secure the windshield no crack no damage is tight and secure and your uh, left hand side hood mirror no crack no damage is tight and secure the brackets are tight and secure your driver side bracket no crack no damage tight and secure the mirror looks clean no crack no damage the window looks clean no crack no damage tight and secure and don't forget to check the back side rear glass too no crack no damage and it's tight and secure okay and then you got to read the minor and the major on this one if there is any so under the glass and mirror under the minor defect a required mirror or window glass fails to provide the required view to the driver as a result of being cracked broken damaged missing or maladjusted 
B, required mirror or glass has broken or damaged attachment onto the vehicle body. That's the minor defect. You make a written report, inform your operator, and continue to drive the vehicle, and there is no major defect on this one. Okay, okay. so the heater defroster is inside, the horns are inside, the hydraulic brake system we don't cover because this is the air brake system, lamp and reflectors, we'll check it later, steering inside, now we're going to do the suspension system. Okay, so in the suspension system, we got three questions. The first question would be the air leak and air suspension system. Second would be the broken spring leaf. The third would be the suspension fastener is loose, missing or broken. Okay, so let's start with the first question, air leak in air suspension system. So this will be a question. Okay, so to check the air leak in air suspension system, you go straight to the airbags, okay? So this is your airbag over here. Okay, no cuts, no damages here. Okay, it's mounted securely. There is no air leak coming out of it and uh, it's inflated well and everything looks good and it's mounted securely. Now under the mo minor defect here for the air leak in air suspension system, so the air leak in air suspension system is a minor defect. You make a written report, inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle. And under the major defect, damaged, patched, cut, bruised, cracked to braid or deflated airbag or insecurely mounted airbag. That would be the major defect. You make a written report, inform your operator and put the truck out of service. Now the second question on the suspension system would be from a broken spring leaf. Okay, so you would have to inspect the spring leaf. Okay, so to check the broken spring leaf, you go straight to the spring leaf over here. Okay, so we got the main spring leaf and we got the leaf spring. No crack, no damage, tight and secure. They're not shifted. They're not out of the place. And then you go under and check to make sure it's not touching any other component of the vehicle. Okay. And for the uh, minor and major, so we're going to go back to the schedule one here and then we're going to read the minor and major. So under the minor defect, a broken spring leaf, that's the minor defect. You'll make a written report, inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle. Under the major defect, cracked or broken main spring leaf or more than one broken spring leaf. Part of spring leaf or suspension is missing, shifted out of place or is in contact with another vehicle component. These, these two are the major defects and uh, what you would do is you make a written report, inform your operator and put the truck out of service. Now next question is uh, the suspension fastener is loose, missing or broken from the same suspension system. Okay, So now we are checking the fasteners only from the suspension. Okay, So to check the fastener on the suspension side, you got to check the uh, fasteners on the airbag. Make sure the airbag fasteners are tight and secure, okay, not missing, no broken. Okay. Uh, your leaf spring fasteners are tight and secure, okay, on the both side make sure they're tight and secure and on the other side as well to make sure they're tight and secure. Right here, okay, the back and then major thing is you check for the U-bolt. The U-bolt is tight and secure, no crack, no damage, and the fastener looks tight and secure, okay. And then you read the minor and major. So under the minor defect, suspension fastener is loose, missing or broken. That's the minor defect. You'll make a written report, inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle. And under the major defect, it's only one, loose U-bolt. That's the major defect. You make a written report, inform your operator and put the truck out of service. All right, so the next, uh, we're gonna do the tires. And on the tires, we got two questions. There's a damaged tread or sidewall of tire, tire leaking if leak cannot be heard. So we're going to start with the damaged tread or sidewall of tire, okay? So the damaged tread or sidewall of tire, so this is how you're going to do it. So you're going to choose that tire that you're going to do the inspection on. You're going to let the examiner know this is my tire that I'm going to do the inspection on, sir. So my sidewall of the tire, there's no cuts, no damage, okay? No bulge. Um, my tire thread is more than 1.5 mm and uh, for the front axle it should be more than uh, 3 mm. Then you go under and check for any stuff stuck in between the tires make sure there's no rocks and stuff in, uh, stuck underneath the tires here and my second tire no cut no damage it's tight and secure and it's not touching any other component of the vehicle from inside okay so once you're done that you're going to read the minor and major for that question so under the minor defect for uh, damage tread is the um, damage tread or sidewall of tire is a minor defect what you have to do is you make a written report inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle under the major defect, then you're going to read B, C, D, and E, which is a tire tread depth is less than wear limit. Tire is in contact with another tire or any vehicle component other than mud flap. Tire is marked not for highway use. And tire has exposed cords in the tread or outer sidewall area.
Okay, so that's for the question damage tread or side wall. Now the next question is the tire leaking. To do the tire leaking, so if you ask you the questions, the tire leaking if leak cannot be heard or they can uh, say let's talk about the tire leak sir. So make sure you tell them sir this is the tire I'm going to do the inspection. Okay, for that I need to get my hammer. Okay, so you get the hammer, you're going to hammer the tires and then you're going to listen for any audible air leak. So you're going to put your hand around the sidewall and say there's no audible air leak from outside tire and the inside tire and it's not flat. Okay, so three things. Make sure you hammer the tires, you check for any audible air leak from outside and inside. Make sure there's no leaks and it's not flat. Okay, so the tires are not flat and then you read the minor and major. So under the minor defect for the tire leaking is the tire leaking if leak cannot be heard. That's the minor defect. What you would do is you make a written report, inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle. Under the major defect, these two, the A and A1 flat tire, tire leaking if leak can be felt or heard. These two are the major defects. What you have to do is you make a written report, inform your operator and put the truck out of service. Okay. So next one is the, the part 22 wheel hubs and fasteners. So in this uh, category, we got three questions. The first question is the hub oil below the minimum level when fitted with the side glass. Second would be the wheel has loose, missing or ineffective fastener. Third would be the damaged, cracked or broken wheel rim or attaching part, okay? Now let's do the first question, which is the hub oil below the minimum level when fitted with the side glass, okay? So you choose your tire, okay? So this is the tire that I need to do the inspection on, sir. So this is my wheel hub over here. Okay, it's above the minimum level, the hub oil inside it. There is no leaks coming from here, okay? And there is no evidence of the wheel hub failure. And then make sure, don't forget to open the hood for this question, and you gotta check from inside as well too. So let me open the hood, and you're gonna have to check it from inside. So again, so I don't see any leaks from the wheel hub from inside. There is no wheel seal leaking. Uh, everything looks good and there is no evidence of the wheel hub failure from inside here as well. So and all the attaching bar looks good. Okay. And then when you read the minor and major for this question, then the minor is hub oil below the minimum level when fitted with the side glass and the leaking wheel seal. So these two are the minor defect. What you have to do is you make a written report, inform your operator and continue to drive the vehicle. And under the major defect, you only got one, which is the evidence of imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. Then that's my major defect. I'll make a written report, inform my operator and put the truck out of service. So that's your question for the hub oil below the minimum level. Okay. Now the next question for the uh, uh, your wheel hub fasteners would be the uh, wheel has loose, missing or ineffective fastener, okay? In this one, you're checking the fasteners only, okay? So in this one, you don't need to open the hood, right? Make sure your hood is closed. Okay, let's say I'm doing this uh, this tire again, right? So wheel hub, uh, in, uh, the question is the wheel has loose, missing or ineffective fasteners. So you're only checking the fasteners, okay? So make sure all your fasteners are tight and secure. No crack, no damage, no missing, no loose. Your wheel hub fasteners over here, tight and secure, no missing, no broken, and there is no evidence of the wheel hub failure. Make sure the no evidence of the wheel hub failure will go on every single question of this category, okay? And once you're done, you're gonna tell the examiner, sir, I'm gonna read the minor and major, so there is no minor for this question. And for the major, what we have is, wheel has loose, missing or ineffective fastener and evidence of imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. So these are the two major defects. What you have to do is you have make a written report, inform your operator and put the truck out of service. Now the third question for the wheel hub and fastener is the, uh, the wheel and rim. So this is a question, the damage, cracked or broken wheel, rim or attaching part. They can reword it saying differently, right? They can say, okay, so let's talk about the wheel and rim. All right, so let's say I'm doing the same same stuff here, right? Same, same, uh, same tire. So this is my wheel and rim, sir. Right? There's no crack, no damage. Okay, on the rim. Okay, there is no evidence of the wheel hub failure. Okay, make sure you open the hood for this question as well. And then you go see it from inside. The wheel and rim. There's no crack, no damage. Everything looks good, all the attaching part looks good, and there is no evidence of the imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. So once you're done with this, and then you read the minor and major, 
So the minor, uh, we don't have any minor for this question. And for the major, we got damaged, cracked, or broken wheel, rim, or attaching part, and evidence of imminent wheel hub or bearing failure. These are the two major defects. What you would do is you make a written report, inform your operator, and put the truck out of service. And that concludes your wheel hubs and fastener, all the three questions in it.